Okay, in this video we want to look at a quick corollary to Fermat's Little Theorem, and then we'll also look at a result that follows from Fermat's Little Theorem. So let's re just recall Fermat's Little Theorem. It says that if the GCD of A and P, where P is a prime, is equal to 1, then A to the P minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod P. So now let's, let's really dig into this. If the GCD of A and P is 1, well, what kind of numbers don't have the GCD with a prime being 1? And the answer to that is only multiples of the prime. So in fact, if the GCD of A and P is not 1, then A itself has to be a multiple of the prime, which really leads us to this corollary, um, which says that for all integers A and Z, A to the P is congruent to A mod P. And so we can really split this proof into two cases. One, if the GCD of A and P equals 1, then that means A to the P is equal to A to the P minus 1 times A, which is congruent to A mod P. And here we used Fermat's little theorem. And so now number two is if the GCD of A and P is not equal to 1, well, the only other possibility is that the GCD could be equal to P. Because the only divisors of P are 1 and P. So that means that A equals P times K, which tells you that A itself is congruent to 0 mod P. But then 0 to the pth power is congruent to 0 mod p, and so it follows very trivially that a to the p is congruent to a mod p. So on this side, you know, there's something a little bit more interesting on each side of the modular equivalence, because um, the left-hand side may not be, uh, may not it look like itself A over here, but over here both of these are congruent to 0 mod P. It's much simpler. Okay, good. So now before we get into our result that follows from Fermat's little theorem, I want to look at a following lemma first, which you could do um, almost immediately after learning divisibility, but we'll review it here um, for the result that follows. So the following lemma is this. So if P and Q are distinct primes such that P divides A and Q divides A, then PQ divides A. Okay, great. So let's look at the proof here. So uh, since P divides A, um, we have A equals P times K for some integer Z. Great. And then since Q divides A, that tells us that Q divides P times K. Good, because that's just another way of writing A, but that tells us that Q divides P or Q divides K. So now we know that this one is impossible because we're dealing with distinct primes, so that means Q has to divide K, and so that means we can write K as Q times L. Now, inserting this into this expression for A, we have A is equal to P times Q times L, which is exactly equal to P times Q divides A. Great. So now, let's notice that uh, uh, this is kind of equivalent to the following. If... A is congruent to B mod P, and uh, A is congruent to B mod Q, then A is congruent to B mod PQ. 
So it's exactly equal to this statement. It's just in this case, we're saying P divides A minus B and Q divides A minus B, and that means PQ divides A minus B. Okay, good. So I'll clean up this board and then we'll get to the result that follows from Fermat's little theorem. Okay, so now we're ready to look at this result that follows from Fermat's little theorem. So it has a, like a nice symmetry to it. So for all distinct primes P and Q, we have P to the Q plus Q to the P is congruent to P plus Q mod PQ. So the proof goes like this. So proof, so notice that um, by Fermat's little theorem, we have the following two statements. We have P to the Q is congruent to P mod Q. And we have Q to the P is congruent to Q mod P. And I should say by this corollary to Fermat's little theorem that we proved earlier. Great. So at this point, we want to add a copy of uh, zero to each side of these, and the zero will take a different form. So over here, we want to add Q to the P to both sides. But now notice that Q is congruent to zero mod Q, and here we'll add P to the Q. So plus P to the Q on both sides. And again, P is congruent to zero mod P. So what that gives us is P to the Q plus Q to the P is congruent to P mod Q. And P to the Q plus Q to the P is congruent to Q mod P. Okay, good. But what that tells us um, is that, well, we can do the same thing again. So let's add just a single copy of Q to this side and a single copy of P to this side. Um, so now notice that's the same thing as adding zero again. So that will give us the following. So we're, we're like adding it to this side as well, but it doesn't do anything to the congruence because of what we're taking the mod with respect to on both sides. So in this case, we get P to the Q plus Q to the P is congruent to P plus Q mod Q and P to the Q plus Q to the P is congruent to P plus Q mod P. Okay. Great, and now uh, we're essentially done. Now we can apply the lemma that we had on the previous board, and that tells us that P to the Q plus Q to the P is congruent to P plus Q mod P times Q. And uh, that's the end of this proposition.